We are in lesson number eight, and uh, the subject matter today that we are about to look at, uh, study together, is Christ in all the Bible. We have been looking at the scriptures, how the scriptures reveal Jesus Christ, and we're gonna spend uh, some time uh, looking at uh, a few passages from the Bible that reveal Jesus to us. Let's. Uh, once again, uh, ask God for His help uh, as we open His Word. Loving Father, our God, we, which art in heaven, thank you for the manna that you have given us to sustain us on this uh, wilderness as we crossing and uh, reaching over to the other side. You have given us something that has substance, your Word, and which, he, which is really your Son, Jesus Christ, to make sure that we make it to the other side of the world of this wilderness to make it to the promised land. We pray, Father, that we will not complain, we will not uh, murmur, we will not make the same mistakes as others have made, but to, we would allow you to give us what you see that we need at this time. We need your her, your word more than we know. Give us your Holy Spirit. I pray at this time to help us to comprehend it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the book of uh, John chapter 5. We're going to the book of John, the Gospel of John chapter 5. We read this passage before last time. Uh, let's look at that passage here one more time. Jesus is talking here. Jesus says in John chapter 5, uh, notice with me in verse 39. John chapter 5 verse 39. And the Bible says, search the scriptures. Jesus again is talking. Now, what's the reason why we need to search the Scripture? What would we find in searching uh, the Scriptures? It says, Search the Scriptures, for in them uh, ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of, uh, of me. So, here is the reason why we need to search the Scripture. The Scripture, as we search the Scripture, will find eternal life. And in finding in eternal life is finding uh, Jesus Christ. So search the scriptures. These are they which are uh, uh, testified of me. In them ye think ye have eternal life. These are they that testified of uh, Jesus Christ. So when Jesus was talking about the scriptures, remember, keep in mind back in those days, there, were, there was only the uh, Old Testament. There was not the New Testament yet. So when Jesus says search the scriptures, he was referring to mainly the Old Testament, but it also applies to us living uh, in uh, in this era. It also the New Testament also applies to you and I. So it's both uh, to you and I. It's both the new and uh, the old. Notice what Sister White says here from a Christ Object Lesson, uh, page one hundred and twenty-eight. It says here the Old Testament sheds light upon the new, and the new upon uh, the old. Each is a revelation of the glory of God in Christ. Both present truths that will, notice with me, continually reveal new depths of meaning to the earnest seeker. So who will be able to comprehend the truths, the meanings that are there? Those that are seeking, the, uh, digging into the word uh, earnestly. And as Jesus says, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have uh, eternal life. These are they which uh, testify of me. Let's look at a few passages here that deal with, uh, let, we're going to compare some passages from the old, as Sister White says, from the old and the new to show what Jesus says here, that the scriptures testified of Him. That means the Scriptures are a revelation of Him. Now again, He was referring to the Old Testament when He made that statement there. He was referring to the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, there were prophecies about the Messiah. And that means Jesus had to fulfill these prophecies to the T in other for the Scriptures to reveal Him. Notice now, it says here, let's go to the book of Micah with me. We're going to the book of uh, Micah, uh, chapter 2. Mike, Mike, I'm sorry, Micah chapter 5. We're going to the book of Micah chapter 5. Notice with me what the Bible says uh, 
in Micah chapter 5. Let's read verse 2. It says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come. The he there is the, the Messiah. Shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from ever everlasting. And uh, that is a direct prophecy of uh, Jesus Christ, that he was going to come and born uh, in, uh, in uh, Bethlehem. And according to the book of Matthew, that's exactly what we read, that Jesus was born uh, in Bethlehem, though he was raised in Nazareth, but was born uh, in uh, Bethlehem. And then also in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 53, it describes his life and uh, his uh, uh, suffering and his, uh, his uh, death for you and I. And that was also fulfilled as we read uh, the four Gospels. But let's, look, let's go with me to the, to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 11, this time we're going to. The book of Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11, notice a prophecy here again. As we search the scripture, what should we discover or whom should we discover? Christ. Zechariah chapter 11, notice what the Bible says in verse 12 of Zechariah chapter 11. It says, And I said unto them, If ye think good to uh, give, give me my price, and if not, forbear, so they weigh for my price uh, 30 pieces uh, of uh, silver. Where do we find uh, the fulfillment uh, of that prophecy? Notice with me in uh, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. And uh, notice in verse uh, 15 of uh, Matthew chapter 26. And the Bible says in verse 15, uh, there we find uh, the fulfillment uh, of uh, that prophecy. It says, and uh, this is dealing with uh, Judas Iscariot. Let's begin in verse 14, rather. It says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they convenanted, covenanted with, with him for how, how much? Thirty pieces of uh, of silver, which is exactly what we just read in Zechariah chapter 11 about uh, uh, Christ, that he was going to be betrayed for 30 pieces of uh, silver. Let's look at another passage here, and this time we're going to the book of Psalms. The Psalms uh, is uh, another very good book from uh, the Old Testament uh, that prophesied a lot about uh, the Messiah. Did Jesus fulfill these things? Uh, Psalm uh, chapter 22, we're going to. Psalm chapter 22, notice with me in uh, verse 1. Notice the words there in verse 1 of Psalm chapter 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? So the first uh, few words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Where do we find this fulfillment? Matthew back again, uh, this time chapter 27 to the book of Matthew we're going to. We're going to the book of Matthew chapter 27. There we find... Uh, the, the fulfillment uh, of exactly what we just read in Psalm chapter 22, verse 1. And the Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 27, uh, verse 46, uh, it says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with uh, a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me. Also, if we look at another fulfillment there, so what are we doing here? We are looking at what Jesus said to the disciples in John chapter 5 verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. These are they which, uh, here's the word there, testify of me. That means uh, as we look at uh, what it's, it says in the Old Testament, then uh, we must, uh, about the Messiah, prophecies 
that, uh, that were foretold about the, the Messiah, then we must find the fulfillment of these prophecies in the new. Amen. Like Sister White says, the Old Testament shed light upon the new and the new shed light upon the old. Notice with me. Let's go this time to the book of uh, Psalm chapter 31. Another prophecy there in the book of Psalm chapter 31. Psalm chapter 31. Notice verse 5 with me. And the Bible says in Psalm 31 verse 5, it says, Into thy hand I commit my spirit, thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. The words there, into thy hand, I commit my spirit. Was that talking about the psalmist there? Was that talking about the David who wrote Psalm 31? Or was this a prophecy about the Messiah that would reveal the Messiah? That was one of the prophecies that would show that that was indeed the Messiah that was to come. Notice with me, go to the book of uh, Luke. Look with me and we, there we find the fulfillment of this. Luke chapter uh, 23. In Luke chapter 23, we find the fulfillment uh, of these words there. It says uh, in Luke 23 verse 46 and uh, the word of God says in verse 46, it says, uh, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, uh, Father, these are the words there that we just read in the book of Psalm chapter 31. Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Having said thus, he died. He breathed his last. So Jesus again said, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, these are they which, uh, there's what, which uh, testify of, uh, of the Son of God. Back with me, go back with me to your Bible. Jesus again was talking to the disciples. In John chapter 5, 39, he says, uh, search the scriptures. In them you think you have uh, eternal life. These are they which uh, testify uh, of me. But notice another one here. What about uh, John 1, 5? Let's go to the book of John 1, 5. Another similar passage there. So notice with me, again, as we search the scriptures, we must search it because we want to have eternal life. We want to have life. And that life is only found in Jesus Christ. These are they which testify of me. If I want to have life, I must uh, do what? I must search uh, the scriptures. The scriptures reveal uh, the Son of God. It reveals uh, Jesus Christ. Notice with me. Let's go to the book of uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1, a similar passage there. Verse 45 of John chapter 1. It says, notice this here. It says uh, in John chapter 1, verse 45. Well, let's begin in verse of. 43 it says the day following jesus would come forth into galilee and findeth philip and saith unto him follow me now philip was of bethsaida the city of uh, andrew and uh, peter philip findeth uh, nathaniel and saith unto him we have uh, noticed the words there we have done what we have found uh, him we have found who we have found uh, him. How was it possible for Philip to have found him? Well, apparently that they have been studying, or Philip there had been studying the scripture. So when he was in the presence of Jesus Christ, he realized that uh, what the prophets had said, had prophesied, Jesus met uh, these requirements. Notice now, and uh, no, that's the lesson for you and I. We must search the scriptures in a way that uh, we become very familiar with uh, the word of God or with the voice of God. Then we can say that we have found him. We, uh, we, have, uh, we, we know that without a shadow of a, doubt, of a doubt that he's him. It says here again, it says, verse 45 again, Philip says, we have found him of whom, notice, who? Moses in the law. And who else? And the prophets uh, did write, Jesus of uh, Nazareth, uh, the son 
of uh, Joseph. Similarly, that's what Jesus said in John 5, 39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, these are they which uh, testify of me. We have found him, the scriptures that have been written, what Moses and the prophets had written, we have found him. Notice with me, again, it, it says here, let's go to a, another passage here, let's go to, back to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, again a similar passage here, where Jesus now was rebuking some of the disciples. This was after the resurrection, showing them that the, the scriptures were about him. Notice Luke chapter 24, Luke 24 with me, it says in verse 25, Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe. Notice now, all that the who? The prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory like we just read in Isaiah chapter 53? Or quoted Isaiah chapter 50, 53, the, the chapter that describes the suffering Christ, the, his life, the, his suffering and his, his death. And also in the book of Micah, Chapter 5, verse 2, we just looked at, and also we look at the, in the book of Psalm, how th the psalmist describes the suffering Christ. Christ says, again to the disciples, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have uh, spoken. So we must believe all that we find uh, within the pages of uh, scriptures because they reveal Jesus Christ. These are they that testify of Jesus Christ. And in searching and believing these things, we will receive eternal life. Notice with me, go to the book of, uh, uh, well, let's still looking at, uh, let's stay in the book of Luke. Let's look at verse 27. It says, and beginning at Moses, notice now what Jesus did, and beginning at Moses in all the prophets, he expounded unto them, in all the scriptures, notice now, the things concerning who? Concerning himself. So in all the scriptures. Notice now, brothers and sisters, that's a Bible study that you and I should covet, that we, we should wish that we were there to have that Bible study that these two disciples on their way to Emmaus got from Jesus Christ. But notice now, but the, we still can have this type of Bible studies as we study the scripture on a daily basis for ourselves. What will we find? Like a Philip, we can say to others, I have found him. I, he has uh, transformed my life. I have found him. This is what he has done. We can go and tell others as Philip was doing to go find others uh, to tell them about whom he has found. Have you found Jesus Christ? We should be able on a daily basis as we partake of this manna and said we have found him like Philip said to Nathaniel. Notice again another quote here from Sister White. It says, Philip found the Lord and fully believed in him. He was so rejoiced because he had found, notice now, what did he find? This uh, treasure that he went to hunt for Nathaniel. The treasure that Philip had found, what, what kind of treasure? Was a knowledge that Christ, the Son of God, was among them. Received, notice with me carefully now, received by faith into the heart, the gospel changes the whole man. So notice with me, it must receive how? By faith. That's how it must be received. Otherwise, uh, it uh, profiteth us, me, nothing. As we studied last time, it has uh, to be received by faith. The, the heart, remember, the heart must uh, believe, must receive, must uh, humble itself uh, in order for the seed, which is the word of God, uh, to come into the heart heart and then now it can spring up and brings forth much fruit and what is fruit is character back to the screen it says the word of god is the bread of life taken into the life notice now it transforms the character 
making the coarse refined, the rough gentle, the selfish generous, by it the impure are cleansed, wash in the blood of the Lamb. So we have found him. But what kind of seed did Nathaniel found? Was it a corruptible seed or was it an incorruptible seed? Notice with me. Let's go to the book of, uh, of uh, Genesis chapter 3. Well, we can quote this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. When Nathan, when, I'm sorry, when Philip said that we have found him, he was also referring to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, which says, And I will put uh, enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's what Philip was referring to also. That prophecy there, that long ago, that prophecy about 4,000 years, that from the time of Philip to the time when God made this promise, to our first parent that he was going to bring a, a seed. But again, what kind of seed is that? Notice, and what does a seed also represent? In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, as we looked at last time, just by way of review here, Luke chapter 8, verse 11. Remember, again, it says, I will put enmity between thee and between uh, and the woman between thy seed and her seed, her seed, the seed of the woman. What kind of seed is that? And uh, what is all? What does the seed represent? As we read last time in Luke chapter eight, uh, notice with me in verse eleven. Now the parable is this: the seed is what is the word of God. The seed is the what is the word of God. Now let's. Put the puzzle together. The seed is the word of God. Now, what is the word of God? John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. So the seed is the word of God and the word is Jesus Christ. So notice now, let's look at another passage. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, again the question is, what kind of seed, the seed there, what kind of seed is it? We looked at 1 Peter before, this is just by way of review, 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23, and the Bible says, being born again, not of what? Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. And what else? By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the word of God liveth and abideth forever because it is not a corruptible seed. Amen? It is not a corruptible seed. It is an uncorrupt seed. And the word there that abideth in us and live forever, that is the Son of God that we must find. Like uh, Philip, we can say that I have found him. Notice with me, go back to your Bible now. The same promise of a seed was also given to Abraham. Genesis chapter 22, we're going to. The same promise of a seed that was given to Adam and Eve, our first parents, were also given to Abraham. We are in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Notice with me. Genesis 22, verse 18. The Bible says in verse 18, And in thy seed, God says to Abraham, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Notice now. Seed is singular, not seeds there, but in thy seed shall all the nation of the earth be blessed. What was the reason why? Because Abraham obeyed God's voice. And the voice there, we can say it's his word, God's commandment, God's words. Notice with me another passage here in uh, Genesis chapter 26 
and verse 4, looking at the seed, this incorruptible seed, the promise that was given to Abraham. Again, we are looking at Christ in the scriptures. Search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. These are they which testify of me. The seed there that was promised to Abraham, ultimately, primarily, that was Christ. Notice with me in Genesis 26, verse 4. The Bible says, And I will make thy seed, notice now, seed, singular again, to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the, the nations of the earth bless. This is a, a prophecy about Jesus Christ, but this prophecy will fully come to, uh, to pass, will meet its fulfillment when Christ, the seed, comes again, take us home, and uh, make all things new, and all the nations of the earth uh, will gather together unto him. Notice with me. Let's go to uh, chapter 28. Same cha uh, book, chapter 28, verse uh, 14. The same promise of a seed now was, uh, was given to, to whom now? Notice it says in Genesis chapter 28, uh, verse uh, for 14. Uh, well, let's begin in verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father. And, uh, and uh, the God of uh, Isaac, the land uh, whereon uh, thou liest, to thee will I give it, and uh, to thy, notice seed again, uh, singular, the God was talking to Jacob here, and then it says, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed, singular again, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, what passage of scripture that shows us, that confirms for us that, that the seed there was Christ? That uh, all of these passages from Genesis 22, 18, Genesis 26, 4, Genesis 28, 14, we just look at, that these passages from the Old Testament, where can, uh, where can we find the answer that the seed there was indeed Christ that these passages were referring to? Let's go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Notice with me in the book of uh, Galatians chapter 3. We are studying the Word of God. We are in the book of uh, Galatians or we heading to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Notice with me in uh, verse 16. Paul confirms that the seed, singular, was indeed Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Notice verse 16 of Galatians chapter 3. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, and uh, translation, which is Christ. So search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. These are they which testified of me. Christ revealed himself to Jesus Christ, to Adam, oh, I'm sorry, to Abraham, to Adam and Eve. In the form of the promise of a seed, it was that same seed that was promised long ago. And that is that seed that we must follow because Jesus says, these are they which testify of me. And the seed is the word of God. We are in this wilderness, brothers and sisters. And uh, we can see by faith the promised land from afar, just like the children of Israel. They were in the wilderness. What did God give them to sustain them? The manna. And uh, what does the manna represent? The word. That's the seed. The manna there also is the seed, the word of God, Jesus Christ, that was, in, that was planted in them and so that they could bring forth much fruit because they were on their way to the promised land. Notice with me, let's go to the book of uh, Exodus chapter 23. Speaking of the children of Israel, Exodus chapter 23, notice with me what the, the word of God says here in verse 20. Notice with me. Jesus will go with us. 
but we must have uh, His Word abiding in us, the Scriptures in us. That's how He will go with us. He will sustain us. That's why He gave them the manna so that He could go with them. Notice with me, it says here, verse 20 of uh, Exodus 23, Behold, I send an angel, un underline angel here, and keep in mind the word angel there means messenger, not necessarily a physical angel there. It, it's a messenger. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. The angel will keep thee in the way and will make sure that you make it to the place that he has prepared. Does God have a place prepared for you and I? Yes. What did He has given us to make sure that we make it to the kingdom? His word, search the scriptures, because the scriptures reveal Jesus. And who, by the way, is this angel there that uh, will go with the people and making sure that they make it there? Let's find some confirmation here. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter Chapter 10, keep in mind the word uh, angel there and then uh, the word that uh, he will go with you, okay? Notice with me, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians, we're going to, book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, and uh, remember, the Old Testament uh, shed light on the new, like, just like the new shed light on the old. Let's begin in uh, verse uh, 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did eat the same, what is it, spiritual meat. What did the, the apostle Paul call the manna there? Spiritual meat. And uh, what is our spiritual meat? Remember Jesus says in Matthew 4 to the, uh, the enemy, to the adversary, Satan, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He was quoted, Moses, from uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, somewhere over there, where Moses says, the Lord uh, suffer you to be hungry so that ye might know that men shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And uh, the Apostle Paul says in verse 3 again, and did eat the same spiritual meat. So again, here's the confirmation there that the manna represents the spiritual food that we need, which is the Word of God, which is uh, Jesus Christ. Verse 4, and did all drink the same, uh, notice again, spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock is, uh, was who? Was uh, Christ. So who was the angel according to uh, Exodus 23, verse 20, when we read, uh, Behold, I send an angel before thee. So notice now, the word follow that you find in uh, verse 4 there. Let's read verse 4 one more time. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. The word follow them means to uh, literally means to go with or went with. And uh, in Exodus 23, verse 20, it says that will send my angel who will go before thee. So that was Jesus Christ. That was the spiritual food that went with them, that made sure that they would make it to the promised land. Likewise, Jesus has given us his word that uh, as David says, that, I, that we may hid in our heart so that we might not sin against him. So his word must be in our heart so that we might not sin against him in order to make it to the promised land. Likewise, the children of Israel were given the manna, the spiritual food, and which is Jesus Christ, 
to keep them from sinning because they were about to go to the earthly Canaan. And we are about to go to the heavenly Canaan. So we need the Son of God to go with us. He is the bread of life. He is the spiritual food. He is the spiritual drink. Search the scripture, Jesus says. These are they which testify of me. And then you think you have eternal life. These are they which testify of me. If we want eternal life, we must search the scripture. And uh, as we search the scripture, like Philip, uh, we discover Jesus Christ. Then we can say we have found him. Let's pray. Loving Father which art in heaven, thank you for your word that you have uh, given us. The Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. The food that we need, if we want to leave this earth, if we want to go to heaven with you, we must partake of it. Help us, Father, to do so and give us understanding. Bring these things that we study together to our remembrance. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.